This is In the Trenches, Broadcast 65. Welcome to In the Trenches, where entrepreneurs, artists, writers, designers, inventors, warriors, and leaders share their stories of doing the hard, creative work that impacts all of our lives. Let the journey inspire you to do something worthwhile, build something bold, and create your life's work. And now, your host, Tom Morgus. Welcome back, everyone, to another broadcast of In the Trenches. I'm very excited to have on today's show Max Allschuler, who is the founder and CEO of Sales Hacker Inc. and the author of the recently released book, and I purchased it, and I'm about halfway through it, so I can confirm it's it's pretty amazing so far. I expect it'll be amazing the whole way through. A sales hacker, and as you can probably guess from the title, it's all about hacking sales. How do we how do we get more sales? And if you're anybody who sells anything then this should be up your alley. And I have to say, it came around at a very appropriate time in my life where I was trying to figure out ways to automate systems, how I was trying to set up, systematize a lot of my sales process. And I, so far, like I said, I've not finished the book completely, but, but the bits I've gotten from it in the beginning have been really useful at doing that. So I'm excited to dig into the book itself today and, um, and, and find out from Max like what inspired him to, to write this book, why it's so useful, and, and dig into some of the, hack, the sales hacks that are present in the book itself. So Max, thank you for so much for being on the call with us today. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you're enjoying the book so far. Yeah, absolutely. So before we dig into that, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Your, you know, The things I didn't mention is, is some of your time at Udemy and, and some of these other really remarkable things you've done in your past. So maybe you can briefly tell us a little bit about that and uh, what led you to Sales Hacker. Yeah, so I was the um, second business hire at Udemy uh, back in 2011. Um, they were still a very small company and they needed help building out the supply side. And so I kind of took that under uh, control and built out the um, what we call the impl- uh, supply side, but it's the instructor side um, of the marketplace. And so uh, we set up some really unique uh, hacky things that you know most people weren't doing at the time. And uh, you know I started writing about it, and kind of that's how I you know cut my teeth, but also made a little bit of a name for myself and started just sharing with all entrepreneurs um, kind of how to do the same things that we were doing at Udemy in their businesses and that kind of spawned um, you know a sales hacker meetup and then the sales hacker conferences so some of the interesting things that we were interesting things that we were doing were um, you know using technical web scraping and uh, figuring out how to access data in order to go out and build massive leads lists and then supplementing that with um, a team of virtual assistants in the Philippines that we were paying 350 an hour to to go out and build out those leads lists for us and so we got um, pretty creative with it. We were using some SEO keyword uh, generating tools to generate strings of keywords that our VAs can go type into some of these um, search engines. We were you know, scraping lists of other uh, top selling courses and top selling books um, in, the, you know, in the technology space so that we knew what, how to prioritize. Um, what else we were doing? We were uh, leveraging our marketing team to, to direct us in you know, a way where, you know, we knew which category to go after next. So, you know, putting up kind of um, uh, like a, like the face of a course and then changing the, you know, maybe changing ads based on the categories and then based on the clicks, deciding which category to go out and get content in and then going back to marketing with that content saying, here, push this. So it's almost like working really closely with your marketing team um, to figure out which direction your sales team should go in to then get back to your marketing team. Um, and there were, you know, tools that we were using in sales like ToutApp. You know, we wanted ToutApp's first customers to go out and, and track and optimize emails. So the entire thing was basically building a scientific sales process um, around going out and getting instructors for this marketplace. So it was a little bit of a mix between maybe like growth hacking and, and sales. And um, we called it sales hacking. So uh, it spawned the, the conferences, and, and now we're just out there trying to teach uh, as many entrepreneurs and salespeople as possible how to kind of do similar things at their companies, uh, generating more revenue 
uh, using less resources. And that's very important at an early stage company or, um, you know, when you're, you're on your own. Man, that's awesome. I'm going to geek out and just say that I love the concept of sales hacking. Um, and, and I think it's so fascinating and it's exactly the stuff that I do on a day to day basis, um, with publishing. So, although I haven't set up these intricate systems just yet. So, so real quick, before we dive into the sales hacker conference and, and, and sales hacker book, tell me a little bit about you, you mentioned something you're like, you would scrape this list of like, of, of leading courses and books. Yeah. How, how would you, like on a practical level, you don't have to get into too much of the nuts and bolts because I know a lot of it's probably software focused mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but how, how exactly would you go about, say, scraping a list for something like that, whether it's a, you know, a popular book and, and, and what do you try yeah. to pull from that? Yeah, so I guess it's all tied back to your goal and your goal should be finding a massive database or building a massive database of your low-hanging fruit or your ideal customer profile. And so figuring out you know, who your exact target is um, you know, maybe if you are selling a piece of software that's for, you know, made for marketers and, you know, you're complementary or competitive to a product like MailChimp, then your ideal customer profile is a user of MailChimp. You know, anybody who's paying for MailChimp should be also paying for your product. Um, just like a company like ToutApp, anybody using email for business should be using a a tout app or an outreach or a, you know cadence or yesware one of those types of companies to track you know outbound messages there are a lot of different ways to find your ideal customer profile once you find that now it's about going out and getting um, those targets in mass and so you know where do those people live so uh, a company called storefront was they do short term um, real estate rental for retail so they want um, like storefronts in different communities. So their ideal customer profile is a, you know, a storefront in Soho that it might have extra, you know, retail space. So they would go out and scrape Yelp. You know, on Udemy we would go out and scrape, you know, we wanted instructors that taught PHP, we'd, we'd go out and, and scrape, um, you know, Amazon best-selling PHP authors. And so how we do that, you know, in the back end is, um, you know, there, there are a couple of different ways. So there's the, the technology and like coding way where you can actually build like a Python scraper and do um, and do some interesting stuff you know with uh, either like phantom headers or um, building out a, a scraper in Python you know from scratch which Ryan Buckley wrote a great article about um, while he was at scripted they were doing this with Crunchbase but if you're not technical and you don't want to pay for that you can do it with uh, virtual assistants manually through Mechanical Turk or through Odesk, paying them like three fifty an hour, or uh, there's a couple new tools out there. Um, one called Kimono Labs, one called Import IO, another one called Helium, and they're all um, non-technical web scraping tools. So you can install the Chrome extension and then go to the page that you're interested in scraping the information off of, and then basically just define um, you know what pieces you want pulled and what what to name those those assets? So you know, if you go to a page, uh, you know, and you want to scrape Amazon best-selling PHP authors, you can go to the page. You can pull up like the Import IO Chrome extension, and um, you know, okay, t- book title, name that title. Then you want the author name, name that author. Then you want maybe like the ranking. Maybe you want the amount of reviews they have. Um, those are all of the things you can pull um, into that document, and then going out and finding their email addresses is the next step and that part is usually done through uh, leveraging virtual assistants. Wow, this is uh, really good stuff. So I've done this all at a very small scale but I find this very, very fascinating how um, how it can scale from there and that's really cool that you had that, this uh, really to, to, to use it for Udemy, I mean it's what an incredible opportunity but I know you you kicked ass at it and now um, no, really, I can think of no better person to be running a sales hacker conference or writing the book on sales hacking. Um, so, so tell me, was that the the next step from from working at um, w- with Udemy to grow their platform uh, to to moving right into sales hacker? So, I went to a company called Attorney Fee and um, was the VP of Business Development over there. Did similar things for them that I did for Udemy, and we ended up selling the the company to LegalZoom. And um, right after that, started Sales Hacker. Uh, wanted to, you know, share this information uh, and build a community around it. 
Um, technology is changing more than ever before, especially for sales in the, over the past two, three years. And so we're in an exciting time. Um, you know, everything's getting in, enhanced. I don't know if there's, you know, there, there's no almost new medium for sales, but all the past mediums are getting greatly enhanced. So face-to-face, -face, phone, email are still the main methods of selling, but there are so many things you can do now to make those things um, work for you. And so uh, just bringing all that to life and, uh, and surfacing it for people and kind of um, bringing everyone together, bringing some, together some of the thought leaders that are um, working on the, the newer, more innovative stuff um, and getting that education out there is important, but it's also um, a great place to be right now, sitting in the kind of intersection of sales and technology. And so that was important. And um, the book kind of came out of that. I mean, the book has been um, something that I've lived by for a long time and just needed to get, just needed to put that on paper. And, um, you know, once I sat down to, to write it, it kind of just poured out of me. And so, you know, I wrote that book pretty much all in one shot. Um, and you know, without without too many breaks, and uh, I think it goes to show like just how much I've been living this, um, living what I preach, and um, you know, it it all came out and uh, had some some input from some of the best guys in the industry, and um, yeah, and I'm excited to to kind of continue sharing this education with everyone. Right, no, for sure, and I would I, I actually argue and say that you've got to be probably one of the the leaders in the industry when it comes to this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, some of the stuff you've done is, is is truly remarkable, and so tell me a little bit about the book. So you said you said it was it was pretty natural for you to get it all out, um, yeah. to put it all together. Uh, what you know when it comes to the book itself, the the feedback you've gotten from people, um, what are people's reactions to this? And I guess in particular, I'm curious why there are not more books on this topic. Yeah, so it's a relatively new topic, and uh, again, technology for salespeople is, is it hasn't been as prevalent. Um, you know, you have Salesforce mm -hmm. and a couple other you know companies that were doing you know CRM stuff, somewhat interesting stuff. But now data is so much more accessible and cheaper, and so a lot more companies can work on the external data side, which is like going out and building fresh leads lists in real time instead of buying lists and then the internal data side like um, you know a company like data hug that goes in and shows you uh, you know how effective your email engagement is based on how often you're following up and you know what the copy looks like and so uh, same thing with like a tout app you know you can get more information from these tools and developers are starting to build for salespeople more than ever before VC money is going into sales tools um, you know, you're seeing kind of the rise of a, like a full stack salesperson. Um, science is becoming more of a factor than just the art, um, but I think they're both equally important. But uh, you know, in the book, I go on to list about 150. We showcase about 150 sales tools, and I don't think you could have done that like two, three years ago. I didn't think there was 150 of them worth showcasing. I don't even know if there were 50 of them worth showcasing. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, now is the time. Um, the process is still relatively new. Not a lot of people are using virtual assistants in their sales process, um, and not a lot of people understand, you know, that these tools are available to them. So yeah, uh, well, yeah. and I'm kind of happy about that because it gives uh, it gives Plus some of advantage. us. A, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm like, it's one of those situations where I'm like, should I share this book? Well, obviously, yeah. I'm going to Max. I mean, I think it's really, really <laughs> good. I mean, it's it's it's. Um, I, I was really fascinated by growth hacking when that started to come on the scene when people talked about that. Um, but I can like legitimately say, well, I guess the, the problem for me with growth hacking is I'm not an engineer. So it's yeah. like the conceptually, I love the idea, but I, I'm just like, well, at a really yeah. nuts and bolts level, there's not much I can do with it except for these tools that are coming out and making, uh, you know, growth hacking possible. But I'm really fascinated by the sales hacking piece of it, um, yeah. which I think is very similar to growth hacking, um, shares, I'm sure the same, um, kind of idea of like combining engineering with marketing, um, and so on and so forth, which is pretty, yeah. pretty interesting. But yeah, it's I mean, the little, tools, yeah. Oh, go ahead. It's a little less technical, um, for sales and it allows you to kind of like get creative, um, mm. with the process. And yeah, it's just, um, you know, for companies that don't have the, the resources that the big corporations do, you got to find a way to generate, you know, more revenue using less resources. And so, um, any way you can, 
you know, figure out a hack in the sales process, um, you're going to get an unfair advantage, uh, you know, on your peers. And, you know, you, you got to figure it out. I mean, our, our goal was 20% month over month growth and, you know, not allowed to spend any more money because we didn't have any more money. And so you had to get creative with it. And that, that allows you to start doing some really interesting things like building out a team of 12 in the Philippines to go out and build lists for you. I mean, like nobody was doing that. I mean, outsourcing the entire SDR process pretty much, um, you know, to a T. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. And I think you'll start seeing a lot more companies doing it. Yeah, well, definitely. I, I, it's pr- very, it's fascinating to me. Um, when it comes to, well, you also mentioned you were, so the, the, your your prior business that, that ended up selling to uh, to Legal Zoom, um, you were the the what was it the VP of um, Biz Dev, yeah. business development. Business. Now, where does the business development that that position fit into this role, or where does sales hacking fit into that role of business development? Do you feel that they're complementary? Does a business developer need to be a sales hacker in this day and age, or how does that work? Yeah, I mean, business development is like the vaguest term. Um, yeah, you know the 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 business development role that. You know, I guess I lump it into is just partnerships, but in a lot of cases, business development is um, all encompassing. It's it's vague enough to bundle sales, partnerships, and a lot of other things. So technically, when I was at Udemy, my title was business development, and I landed the contracts with Pearson, O'Reilly, and Wiley in the University of Cincinnati. So our first and only uh, private university, and the three largest tech publishing companies um, in the world, and you know, I landed those deals as a like partnerships person, and then brought on all the instructors as pretty much a salesperson. So it's a pretty vague term. I think, in, you know, even in the attorney fee case, you know, it was partnerships and sales. It, you know, it's everything. You know, product is developing business. I mean, sales is developing business. I mean, it's just it lumps into a lot of different things. But you can use the sales hacker stuff in partnerships. So if that's what you're if that's what we're considering business development, then yeah. I mean, uh, just because there's no dollar value at the end doesn't mean it's not the you know same thing as landing a big partnership and getting that contract signed. Yeah, definitely. So, bring it back to the book too. In terms of you know beyond the tools, um, what what advice do you have for somebody uh, looking to say hack their sales for their business? Uh, in terms of like strategically, how should we view this? Like, what's What's the frame of mind that you want to approach this subject with or approach your business with when it comes to to sales? Yeah, well, the the better you qualify someone further down, the less time you waste. And so if you're just really if you're just really like religious and disciplined with understanding who your customer is first and foremost, then you can go out and find those exact people, target those people with the right message at the right time and the right person, you're going to have a high rate of success and you're not going to waste a lot of your time and you're not going to piss a lot of people off. And so like really the most important thing is figuring out early on in your sales process and in your organization like what that looks like, what that what that ideal customer is and how to really figure out okay, what are the what are the three or four things I'm looking for, you know, in a person or in a in a company um, that checks off those boxes. So that when I don't get on, when I get on a call with them later, I'm not asking them like if they have budget or if they have the need or if they have you know if I'm talking to the right person. Wasting your time on the phone later on in the process um, with someone who might not potentially be right for you. So just going into it with the mindset of like, okay, first thing I need to do, and really the most important thing is to figure out you know who I'm trying to sell to, and once I figure that out, it's going to be a lot easier going forward um, you know that's like the number one thing that I don't see people doing and it just it throws a wrench in your whole process yeah now that's particularly a problem for startups as well I would think because when you I, I, I suppose and I'm making an assumption here but working for an established company they might have a yeah. I'm assuming they'd have a clearer idea of who that target customer is and they could yeah. better define it but how about for a startup who's st- trying to get that initial traction yeah. What what do you propose is the best way to um, to come to that understanding of the uh, of of the uh, target customer to begin with? Yeah. So to to figure that out, you got to look at your your peers in the in the marketplace. So there's got to be companies that are selling to the same people that you should be selling to. There's also people that are competitors mm-hmm. 
You know, so it's like going out and finding who your competitors, customers are, and finding out who your, you know, your allies in the industry are, or who you're complementary to, would be the first thing that I would do. Um, you know, my my, I had a friend of mine who was selling into learning and development, and so we went up, we went and pulled up a bunch of big companies that you know we knew were selling into learning and development, and just went onto their customer pages or into their t- uh, testimonials, and it's interesting, like. You can pull up a website for some big corporate company and they'll have a list of their customers and then they'll have a case study section and then they'll have the exact person, the decision maker, on the other side who just gave them a quote for the case study. And for a lot of different, for a lot of different um, I guess, you know, sales, uh, you know, there's, there's room for more than one purchase. Like in learning development, in ad tech, you know, maybe not in software, maybe... Maybe someone's not going to buy Pardot and Marketo, um, but you know, in in ad sales, somebody's going to buy AdRoll and you know Retarget or AdRoll and uh, you know one of those other you know um, ad tech companies, mm-hmm. um, Blue Kai or something like that. So you can go in and really figure out kind of who their ideal customer profile is, mm. translate that to yours, and then it's a work in progress. It's kind of like experimenting going forward. Um, and you'll figure it out, you know, pretty quickly um, based on the people that you're talking to. And then you can also start going through past deals to figure out who the person is internally that you need to speak to at that size, of, that size company. So, yeah, again, it's like, you know, it's, it's more important for startups in general um, because you also, like, don't know who your customer profile is yet. But also, you don't have time and money to waste like a right. big company does. And so, you know, most of these startups that, you know, maybe they'll raise like a 500K seed or angel round or something like that. You got like six months worth of runway. You don't want to spend three months dealing with the wrong customers. Right. Um, with the huge corporate companies, you know, they have the, you know, they have thousands of sales reps. They're going after everyone and they're trying to turn people who might not be, you know, right for the product. When they have territories who are chiropractors in Canton, Ohio, and your territory is the entire world, you know, you might not want to waste your time on, you know, small fish or bad leads. You need low-hanging fruit. Um, when there's when their territories are that granular and they have thousands of reps, they can just call everyone. So it's a bit different. And now it seems like the the trend I'm picking up too from what you're saying here is there's there's value in in scale in the amount of in the quantity of leads that you can pull but not also not just like spamming like in, in that construct yeah. but like actual qualified leads so that's part yeah. of the the if you do it right if you're scraping the list and you're you're um, filtering them right and 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 all that then you're coming out with a list of people who will legitimately be interested in your product or service um, and you can reach out to them appropriately but it, but there is yeah. value in that scale is that correct it still comes down to kind of a numbers game you still need a certain yeah. there's certain so, like conversion and all that yeah we don't we don't preach you know going out building lists throwing them into tout app and then spamming people with like a generic email I mean there's a lot that goes into that finding your ideal customer profile your low hanging fruit and making sure that it's the right person at the right time then going out and figuring out what the right message is segmenting those lists so you can send that right message to a group of people uh that's you know maybe uh tweaked a little bit per each one or you know is it's such a small list or it's so granular that you know, that message is, is right for that entire list. You know, what I see a lot is, you know, people take, you know, people take advantage of this accessible data and the tools that are available and they'll go out and build a 10,000 person list and then just spam them. You know, I saw somebody post on Twitter a while back, um, you know, looking, looking to get a list of 10,000 SaaS companies built, uh, message me for details or something like that. And he was willing to pay someone to build him a list of 10,000 SaaS companies. Like, okay, that's all well and good, but you have done no, you know, like you have figured out nothing about the person that you want to sell to. You just know that they're in SaaS. What are you going to do with that list? That's lethal. <laughs> right. You know, that's terrible. Like that person is going to, you know, their domain is going to be blacklisted and they're not doing it right. Um, so we definitely don't preach going out there and building, you know, building a list that's just, you know, we're just going to get as many leads as possible and then figure it out later. Um, you're wasting your time and your money on virtual assistants if you're doing that. You should yeah. figure you should figure out early and again, right time, right you know, right person, right time, right message. You're gonna have a really good chance of success. 
Um, and you can do that at scale. You know, there's ways to do it. You just got to figure it out early on, though. Very cool. So any other major things that you believe that are like really important core concepts of, of your book that people, well, obviously I'm going to encourage people to read it. And I'm going to, I'm going to share that with, with my audience and make sure to spread that, that gospel because I think this is re- a really important book. But any other core messages that you think people should take away from your book um, when they read it? Yeah, definitely. So we're, I think the, the main thing is like, we call this the sales automation or sales acceleration era. Everybody's got a pretty much a different term for it, but I think it's about uh, sales optimization right now. Again, you know, we're not changing the mediums. You're still selling face to face phone and email, but you're actually enhancing, you know, all three. So you're, you're optimizing what you've done in the past. You're enhancing it. And the real way to do that is to build uh, measure, you know, build test measure and then, um, and then optimize. And so, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Again, the data is very accessible using some of the tools that are available to you. Um, and so, whether it's external data or in- internal data, you know, you can find ways to kind of build out, you know, a process, test that process, measure the results, and then optimize it and consistently optimize. Whether it's your your outbound email that you know you got a bad open rate, so you can fix your subject line because that ties directly to that. You got a bad click through rate, so you can. Fix your call to action. As long as you have a process, uh, you can make progress and then get to perfection. And so, as long as you have that process built in the first place, you know, just continue um, testing, measuring, and optimizing it. So, build, test, measure, optimize would be, you know, the the one key takeaway. Um, you know, and the more you can do with that in your in your sales process, uh, the better off you'll be. Awesome. Great stuff, Max. All right, man. Well, I know we've taken up a lot of your time, but I think you've delivered some serious gold here. Can't wait to get this out to my audience and share it. Can't wait to share your book. Um, Where can people find you? Where can they find out more about you and maybe join in on your conference or anything else that you're offering right now? Yeah. So the book is on Amazon. It's called Hacking Sales by Max Altschuler. And uh, you can get get that there. There's also an audio book. If you go to hackingsales.com, you can find the PDF and the audio book. Um, we're at saleshacker.com, and you can see our blog where we get some of the best in the business to post on all things sales development, um, sales hacking, uh, a lot of different topics over there. We have a New York conference coming up on April 30th, and then our big San Francisco conference is in November. We'll have that. Uh, we'll have details for that soon. But uh, I'm really looking to, to create kind of like a buyer seller slash educational environment for that one. That's going to be a bigger one. And then, um, yeah, we have our vet program this weekend. So we're actually uh, taking war veterans and, and training them in sales development and then placing them at tech companies in San Francisco. And so we're going to try it out in San Francisco. And if it works, um, we'd love to put that in, uh, in you know, plenty of other cities. I think there's, uh, I think it's an absolute no-brainer. There's, um, you know, undeniable uh, kind of traits that, you know, vets and salespeople share. And with a little bit of training, I think we can create, you know, the ultimate sales development rep and, um, you know, technology companies need those right now. So uh, those are the things we're working on. Come come, come see us there. Uh, come find me at, on Twitter at Max Alts, M-A-X-A-L-T-S. And then we have a, a group on LinkedIn as well, the Sales Hacker uh, community on LinkedIn. So um, that's where you can find us. And thanks, for, uh, thanks for the chat today, Tom. Perfect, Max. I really appreciate it. It'll all be listed in the show notes. Can't wait to get it out to my audience. So thanks again, man. Cool, definitely. And that wraps up another broadcast of In the Trenches. If you'd like to check out the show notes, just head over to tommorcus.com slash podcast, where you'll find the latest broadcast. And if you enjoyed today's broadcast, please do me a favor and leave a rating and review on iTunes. That's the fastest, simplest, easiest way to support my creative work, and it would really mean a lot to me. As always, this is Tom Morcus. And if you're listening to this, you are the resistance.